Hello and welcome to the Medieval Minute. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Bishop's Palace in St. David's in Pembrokeshire, Wales, to learn more about its significance as a setting in the Maid of Gascony series. Now, the Feast of St. David's is celebrated every year on the 1st of March, and St. David is the patron saint of Wales, so I couldn't think of a better location where to begin this series. Britain's smallest city, St. David's, was originally founded by a monk named David in the 6th century on the banks of the Sleepy River Owen. And David and his monks followed an ascetic, ascetic way of life. That meant that they abstained from eating meat, they drank only water, they spent all of their time uh, when they weren't out pulling the plow themselves to till their fields. They spent all the rest of their time in prayer and following very closely to the monastic hours. Uh, but this group was also known for their academic scholarship and David himself was known as somebody who would, uh, he was known as a preacher in his time and he would go out and visit other places around in Wales to preach. One of them is the um, a location that's 75 miles away from St. David's or from Menevia as it was called back then in a place called Brevi. Now he was preaching to the Synod of Brevi, he was preaching to a crowd and it's said that a dove came down and landed on his shoulder. And certainly his oration skills must have been extremely fine to have been able to preach in such a way and have a dove come and alight, uh, come down and land rather onto his shoulder. So how did I become interested in St. David's and what would be the connection? Where's the link? As a graduate student, I was intrigued by St. David's because I read about this place from uh, chronicles that were left, uh, that were written by another monk named, or another priest named Gerald of Wales. Now, Gerald was a priest who lived in the late 12th and early 13th centuries. Uh, he wrote over 17 books and two of them, the Itinerarium Cambriae and Descriptio Cambriae, kept coming up in my reading lists as a graduate student. So I read them and was really intrigued by what he had to say about his travels from coming from England out to St. David's and beyond, and in particular, particular the places he stopped and he stayed in his itinerary in Cambria. He was preaching along the way. He was encouraging people to take the cross, um, but he was also giving a description of what he was seeing and the interactions he was having with his fellow Welshmen along the way. So that chronicle really set into motion a lot of things for me, and I knew I wanted to come back and visit St. David's. I was just I wasn't able to get there as a graduate student, but I knew after I graduated, I wanted to come back to the UK and take a look myself and make the journey out myself and see what it was that really captured his imagination and, you know, drove him to write all this, uh, do all of his writings on Wales and, and Ireland. So coming back to Gerald, he was a formidable man. He was born in the 12th century. Uh, he was of Welsh Norman descent. He was of um, a very good family, being raised in uh, or being born in uh, Manabir out in Wales. But he eventually went on to be educated at St. Peter's Abbey in Gloucester, which is today what we know in the site that we today know of as Gloucester Cathedral. And it was there that he learned his Latin from a monk named Hamo. And it, he went on from there. He went on into Paris and did uh, followed up on some of his studies there, but always returning to St. David's. And it was really the draw of St. David's. It was really this place that he felt so aligned to that he saw, where he saw himself eventually one day being made bishop. And so his whole life really revolves around St. David's and his desire to become bishop there and, and even to make it become a metropolitan see. Now, David was, um, sorry, Gerald was no stranger to politics. He actually was part of the King Henry II's um, royal chaplaincy when King Henry was traveling through Wales in 1184. The one thing that he really wanted to achieve in his lifetime was creating this base for Wales in St. David's and making this place have the prominence of being a metropolitan see. Of course, this is really remarkable. Back and forth to Rome twice in his 50s and 60s in an effort to um, encourage those in Rome as well as in England to see him in that role. So unfortunately for Gerald, he lived his whole life um, in this effort to see himself uh, be made bishop of this place that he held so near and dear to his heart and he felt so closely aligned to. Uh, he didn't 
that didn't happen for him. He eventually, uh, when he did his first two travels to Rome uh, between 1199 and 1203, he came back, he resigned. And after he resigned um, from his work in Wales and St. David's, he went on pilgrimage, a personal pilgrimage to Rome sometime in or around 1207. But when he came back from that, he would eventually spend his final years in Canterbury where he was working on his books, authoring his books in Latin, and 17 volumes exist today. He was an incredibly prolific writer. So again, how does all of this factor into the overall uh, story of The Maid of Gascony? St. David's as a place is somewhere that's easily, readily available to people to come visit. And I know that firsthand. I, as I said earlier, I went uh, after graduate school and made my first trip out. And it was when I first made that trip, I could see how my characters, how my story was going to line up in this very special place. And and especially the pilgrimage route and the, the path that Gerald followed, which is highlighted in the Templar's Garden um, when the characters take that journey 200 years after Gerald has made it himself, uh, but getting to see it through fresh eyes and, and hopefully bringing a wider awareness of this time and this travel and the amount of travel that was done in the Middle Ages. Certainly before I was a medievalist, I had no concept, I had no idea. I believed the Middle Ages were really this time of darkness and where people didn't leave their villages and they didn't get out on pilgrimage and they, they didn't, you had to be of a certain class of people to do that. And that's not necessarily true. Uh, there was quite a bit of travel, not just between villages, but actually off into the continent. And we know that through many different sources of documentation. But certainly what interests me is the, the idea of pilgrimage and travel and what people were seeing and who they were meeting. So coming back again to St. David's, if you visit the location today, you can arrive, if you arrive up at the city center and you go through the main medieval gate, which is next to a 13th century bell tower, and you descend down into the cathedral close, you'll see the cathedral facade, which just rises up along the banks of the River Owen in front of you. If you cross over this very lovely little narrow bridge by foot, you get to the other side and there's the entrance to the Bishop's Palace. Once you come inside the courtyard, if you look around you, everything you see are, you're, you're going to be seeing the evidence of the later medieval building works. So what you see is actually what was built during the time of Henry de Gower. He was Bishop in the mid 14th century and he created this space that was a, it was a true palace, a very comfortable living space. But by the 15th century, by the time my characters actually arrived there in 1453, it had already started to fall into more of a period of decline. There wasn't as much building going on. There were repairs being made, but really there were, no one came in to really take over the care uh, that had been given to it in the 14th century. There was the Bishop's Palace at Lamphy, which is actually where the Bishop of St. David would often uh, spend more of their time out there. And Lahaden Castle, that was another place of administration for the Bishop of St. David. So, the actual Bishop's Palace that's in St. David's, while it still was in existence, it was one of several locations where the Bishop could reside. But for my characters, what's really important uh, for them is the comfortable living quarters, the close proximity to the cathedral, the, um, the how close it is to the Pembrokeshire coastline, this area of natural outstanding beauty that again today is a favorite among people who want to get out for hikes and bikes and just to be able to step away from everything that's going on further inland. Uh, St. St. David's in Pembrokeshire is a wonderful place for that and for meditation. Uh, I know when I go there, I feel the whole world has stopped. It's just quiet, it's calm, it's peaceful around me. And I'm sure for, our, for the characters in my story, as well as these uh, people from history, this is one of the big attractions for them to this site. So, what do I look for as a medievalist? Uh, when I'm either when I'm doing research or just in general, I look for evidence of comfort or something that gives some indication of what the people were actually living like in their time. And in this case, uh, that includes things like human or zoomorphic heads or animal plants, uh, foliage uh, in a boss. It could be grand stone staircases outside a building. It could be newel staircases inside a building, painted tile work or any kind of painted work, um, stained glass windows or some kind of special window opening that might have window seats, 
of course, latrines um, were very big and just other, other evidence that the height, the ceiling heights and things like that, fireplaces, this all helps to indicate what level of luxury or what level of accommodation the people who resided in those spaces were experiencing. And all of this, uh, and also decorated stonework on a facade or a decorated parapet. So all of this evidence is there in the Bishop's Palace in St. David's. And so again, for me, choosing a place or, or feeling moved to experience a place that really would be a good setting for this story, which was so key, uh, St. David's really ticked all the boxes for me. Uh, now, in the 15th century, as I said, it started to, less and less, the bishops were, were using it as a place, as a location to come and reside. So less and less work was done. Uh, building accounts show that there are um, requests to make repairs, but unfortunately by the 16th century, by the um, Reformation, the lead roofs were being removed. And so the rooms were starting to be opened up to the elements, and it really wasn't uh, habitable anymore. And unfortunately now today, <laughs> as a result of all that, we really, it's a beautiful ruin, but it is that, it is a ruin. And so we have to appreciate what we can see, what's what remains of it. Uh, very similar to Lamphy is another location that is in featured in the Queen of Heaven. And we'll look at that later, but it also has undergone uh, much destruction over the centuries. So I hope you've appreciated or enjoyed this little window into my world and how I have used, uh, in this case, the Bishop's Palace at St. David's as a setting in the Maid of Gascony series. I hope you might be curious to learn more, maybe read the books for yourself and learn more about the history of the places and, and how they relate to the characters in the storyline. Please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel and ding the bell if you want to be alerted for the next uh, videos in this series and when I make new videos on this YouTube channel. And until then, that's a wrap. Mm -hmm.